For me, the great value of philosophy is that it transforms the people who study it, inevitably. Almost if you study it for a, a few hours, it will transform you if you do it properly. And for me, what studying it properly means is engaging with it, not simply letting it um, become, not simply absorbing it passively. So, from, so philosophy isn't a spectator sport. It's, it's different from some other subjects because when you study it, you actually have to do it in the way that if you kick a, fo a football around on a field, you're actually playing football. You may not be as good as Pelé or Ronaldo or whoever it is, but you're still doing, you're still playing fo football. When you're studying philosophy, you're actually doing philosophy because you're engaging with arguments, thinking about what follows from the various ideas that have been expressed. But also, you're, if you're doing it sincerely, you're thinking about how you should live, what's the nature of reality, just as a philosopher will. And it's, if you simply learn it as a dogmatic subject, that's not really studying philosophy, that's letting it wash over you. And I believe this fact about philosophy explains in some ways why it's so transformative. I'm going to come back at the end of the talk as well to another way in which it's transformative. But John Stuart Mill, who's one of my heroes, crystallised this in his book on liberty, which was published in 1859, which is a fantastic little book, when he's talking about the value of free speech. So free speech, essentially for him, has value because it allows people to flourish in various ways. And the freedom to, to express your views, even if they're dissenting views, has a, an immense value because it's a catalyst for other people to think. Philosophy is often, following on from Socrates at the beginning, um, a subject which is, attracts gadflies, um, people who irritate other people because they ask awkward questions. And that's actually at the heart of philosophy, asking difficult questions or awkward questions that other people may not want to ask. Fundamental questions about what follows from what, do you really believe what you're, you're saying and so on. Um, now, when, when a dissenter asks, of, asks something, even if that person expresses that view in quite a forceful way, for Mill, that person's value isn't simply that they might be saying something that could be true, although he allows that many of the most important thinkers of history have been dissenting voices like Galileo or you might think Jesus. There have been people who stand out, Socrates, who go against the flow, ask difficult questions and turn out to have said some things which were very profound. But for Mill, a lot of the value comes in the fact that they force people to think in a non-dogmatic way. So. Philosophy is a subject which encourages you to think non-dogmatically. By that I mean you don't... Uh, I don't know how a television works. I don't know how my iPhone works, really. But I can use it quite effectively, both of those things. I'm going to watch a football match tonight. I'm going to make some phone calls. That's not difficult. But you can't just absorb the conclusions of philosophy in that way. You can't say, look, I, now I know what Wittgenstein thought, so I don't need to understand how he got to those conclusions, or now I understand, having expressed it, what John Stuart Mill thought about free speech. The point about philosophy is you have to understand the reasoning that led to the conclusion, and understanding it involves thinking critically about it. And that process is a very enlivening process. It, it's impossible to do it in a, in a quiet, um, absorb, uh, what's the word, it's a passive way, as I said before, it's, 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 it's an active subject. So it's much more like a kind of physical fitness than it is like watching the sport, I'll be watching the football match, so I'm be the couch potato, but philosophy is not the subject for intellectual couch potatoes. And Bertrand Russell crystallised this quite nicely when he said that some people would sooner die than think, in fact they do. And this is the the big problem that, as Daniel Kahneman has um, pointed out, thinking critically, thinking analytically, involves a lot of energy. It's not an easy thing for us to do, and we often rely on intuitive judgments, and that's, that works pretty well. But there are times when you can't do that, and philosophy is a subject which encourages you to think in that critical way. For me, it starts with Socrates, um, that rather strange um, 
portly, bearded um, Greek philosophy wandered around the marketplace challenging people, asking them to defend their own positions, things that they were supposed to know a lot about. He'd ask a soldier about courage, and the soldier couldn't define courage. And gradually, Socrates would tease away at him and, and actually reveal to anybody standing by that the person who thought they knew what they were talking about didn't really know what they were talking about. And uh, Socrates' friend went to visit an oracle, not a method of finding out the truth that I'd recommend, but the oracle, the Delphic oracle said, in response to the question, who is the wisest person in Athens, or the wisest man in Athens? Socrates. Socrates heard this, didn't believe it, but gradually, as he wandered around the marketplace talking to people, he got to realise that there was some truth in what the oracle had said, that his wisdom lay in knowing how little he knew. Everybody else thought they knew things, but he realised how little he knew. And that's the humble side of philosophy, as it were, that if you study philosophy, you very quickly realise how little you know, not just because reading philosophy can be quite a difficult thing to do, but also because a lot of fundamental questions haven't been answered. Take basic questions about right and wrong. You don't need to go very far into it to discover that it isn't an easy thing to do to establish a system of ethics of the very polarized views on how we should live and there's no simple way of reading off the truth there so there's this humility of recognizing how little that we do actually know which is quite shocking to many people and how how little we can prove but there's also a kind of arrogance that's or um forcefulness that you need for philosophy as well, which is the willingness to question received opinions. This is the challenging of dogma that I was saying is part of what John Stuart Mill emphasised. So that, those two qualities of, I think, are the virtues within philosophy, some of the vo virtues, there are others too. Um, the humility to recognise that you might be wrong, how little you know, and also, um, but also uh, the arrogance or, or full hardness in some cases, of challenging people and asking why they believe things or actually pointing out contradictions or inconsistencies in what people say.